Hello, my name is Alan Hurt, and in this video, I'm going to talk to you about the behavior of enabling the availability groups feature if you want to deploy availability groups using Windows Server. Because there's a difference between SQL Server 2016 and before, and SQL Server 2017 and later. Just a brief bit about me. I've been working with SQL Server since 1992. I've been doing things with high availability for a long time, including a lot of papers from Microsoft. I'm currently a dual Microsoft MVP, as well as a VMware vExpert. If you want to reach me, my handle on Twitter is at SQLHA, and you can also email me at alan.hurt at SQLHA.com. You can find me and my blog at SQLHA.com slash blog. When availability groups was introduced in SQL Server 2012, the way it worked was that you had to enable the feature, which was optional, if you don't enable the feature and you try and go and create an availability group, you'll see a message similar to the one that you see here on screen, which says, I tried to create an availability group, but you didn't enable the feature. Please go do that. Now, when you go to try and enable the availability groups feature, in 2012 through 2016, the thing is, because it was SQL Server on Windows only, you needed an underlying Windows Server failover cluster. You'll see here that enable always on availability groups, but notice that it's grayed out. The server I took this from was not part of an, a Windows Server failover cluster. So to fix it, pretty simple. Create your Windows Server failover cluster, go in on each of the nodes and enable this, and you'd be good to go. SQL Server 2017 is a bit different. You can create a traditional availability group using a Windows Server failover cluster. You can also create something known as a read scale availability group with a slight variant, and you would see it in the UI, called none. It won't use an underlying cluster. Now, know that this is not an availability configuration, but if you look at the screenshot on the right, you'll see that this is a bit different than what I just showed you a moment ago, where this computer is not part of a cluster, but you can enable the always on availability groups feature. However, this causes a problem if you actually want to use an availability group with a Windows Server failover cluster, and you enable this before creating the Windows Server failover cluster. To show you what I mean about how enabling the always on availability groups feature when you don't have an underlying Windows Server failover cluster is a problem, I'm going to show you a demo environment that I have already set up. It's, got, it's comprised of two virtual machines, MCM 2017N1 and MCM 2017N2. These both have SQL Server 2017 running on them. Currently, I'm connected to MCM 2017 N1. Looking in Configuration Manager, if I go and look at the properties of the SQL Server service, we can see here that the, the Availability Groups feature is enabled and the computer isn't a node of a failover cluster in Windows. Now, note the difference here from that screenshot from SQL Server 2016 that I showed you where this box would be grayed out. As I mentioned, you can create a special type of availability group for read scale with none with that setup that I just showed you. So if I go to always on high availability and then I do a new availability group wizard, you'll see here that I don't have the option of a Windows Server failover cluster. I have external, which is for Linux only, and I have none. So right now, this is exactly what I would expect to see. But what happens if you then decide, hey, I don't want to do a none. I want to have a real availability group using an underlying Windows Server failover cluster. Well, let's go create that Windows Server failover cluster underneath. I've already done the prep work to get things to a point where this is going to work. So let's go do that. I'm just going to execute this command. This will take a moment. I could have used Failover Cluster Manager, the graphical interface, but I didn't. And now there are advantages to doing this via PowerShell. As you can see, it's one line of code. It's pretty quick, but especially, say, up in Azure or any of the public clouds where technically it thinks it's using Dynamic for 
IP stuff, even if you have it as static, this is a good way to do things. Now, just to show you that everything is up and running, so I do a get cluster group, cluster group, and put that through get cluster resource. You'll see that the cluster is online. Okay. I'm not going to do a couple steps I would normally do, like create the witness resource, because I'm just really demoing some SQL Server stuff here. But now we've got a Windows Server failover cluster that's comprised of these two servers. Things didn't change here, but if I go look, it's going to say, oh, hey, I see a cluster. If I now go to SSMS, I'm just going to refresh always on high availability because I did make a change. If I now try and create an availability group, you notice things didn't change here. Well, this is sort of the problem in a nutshell. So what's going to happen, for example, if I would then go and disable always on availability groups, Give it a second here, because basically it's going to go restart the service, because I disabled always on availability groups. Now notice it didn't restart agent on this. I'm not going to restart agent just yet. But now I'm going to re-enable the availability groups feature. And it's going to say, hey, it's not going to take effect, so I'm going to restart the service. And you'll notice that little quirk too, when you disable it, it automatically basically just restarts the service, whereas when you enable it, it doesn't. So now I'm going to restart SQL Server Agent. I'll take a moment here. If I go back here and I refresh, always on high availability, try and create a new availability group, lo and behold, I now see Windows Server Failover Cluster. So that's why I did that whole sequence, is that even though it looked like I had the Availability Group feature enabled, I created the Windows Server Failover Cluster after enabling it. It saw that it was part of a cluster, but when I went back to SQL Server, it didn't think anything was different. So the only way to really get that to work is what I did, which was disable the availability groups feature from the instance, re-add it. Now, I didn't do it to MCM 2017 N2. You're going to have to do it there, too. The bottom line, if you're going to create an availability group with SQL Server 2017 using a Windows Server failover cluster, create the Windows Server failover cluster first, then enable the availability groups feature. Even though it technically looks like you can... Uh, enable the availability group feature beforehand as you saw that isn't quite the case what you're going to have to do is is if you accidentally enabled it but want to go use a windows server failover cluster and create it after you're going to have to remove the feature re-add it in both of those things cause a restart of sql server so just be sort of cautious of the order you do things in for more information go to my blog you can contact me via the information earlier thanks everybody for tuning in and have a great day.